Okay, 5.4 now. And with 5.4, we're talking about complex numbers, so let's take a look here. Um, solving these problems. All right, first thing you realize when you're taking a look at the first item here, because we want to solve this, first thing I realize when I'm looking through this is you can't factor it. Can you think of two numbers that multiply to give you 13? That add to give you um, 4? No. So the point is, uh, when we're trying to solve a problem like this, um, we need to use the quadratic formula, is the point I'm getting at. And the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And a happens to be a 1, b is 4, c is 13. So I plug it all in. Negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 13, all divided by 2 times a, which is 1. So underneath the square root sign, I get a 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 13. That gives me negative 36. So this is what I have. I have a negative 4 on the outside, plus or minus. The square root of negative 36. 2 times 1 is 2. Well, this is no problem, except... Yeah, so when we're looking at this, um, here's the problem that you have to keep in mind when we're doing these problems. Um, this is a negative 4, but you can't square root a negative number. Okay? Um, so here's what we do to get around that. We square root a negative 1 and 36, just like you're used to splitting them up. And the reason why we do this is negative 1 times 36 is negative 36, but here's why we do it. Complex numbers is why we do it. Negative 1 equals i, because the funny thing is you can still solve problems that are imaginary. i stands for an imaginary number because you cannot square root a negative number. So because we have a square root of negative 1, basically imagine if you will it's like I'm pulling out a negative right, and turning it into an i. So really here's what I have. I have negative 4 plus or minus i root 36 over 2. Okay, well, what is the square root of 36? That's 6. So really I have negative 4 plus or minus a 6 and an i over 2. And then what we can do is we can divide a 2 out of all of this. And negative 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So you end up with negative 2 plus or minus 3i. The point to this problem is remembering that whenever you have a, a negative, you kind of pull out that negative and make it an i. So if I add this underneath, I pull it out. It will become i root 25. Square root 25 is um, 5. So it's 5i. If you had uh, a negative 16 under a root, it's like saying um, i root 16 and you pull that and that turns into 4i because the square root of 16 is 4. So just something to keep in mind. Root negative 1 is like saying i or an imaginary number. So in this problem over here, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. In the problem, b is negative 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 squared minus 4 times my a, which is 1, times my c, which is 32, all divided by 2a, which is 1. So underneath the root sign, we end up getting negative 64. So negative negative 8 is 8 plus or minus square root of negative 64 is what's underneath the root when we multiply and uh, put that all together and 8 times 2 or sorry 2 times 1 is 2. 
So like I told you before, it's like pulling that out and making it a negative. So this is like saying 8 plus or minus i root 64 all over 2. And root 64 is like saying 8, so it's like 8 plus or minus 8i over 2. And I can divide each of those by 8 to get 4 plus or minus 4i as my final answer. So now that we have an intro to that, that's an intro to the quadratic formula and what the uh, i actually means for imaginary numbers. Uh, when we come back here, we will solve some more problems using uh, complex numbers.